Welcome everybody to the 2023 Mercedes-Benz C-Class. And uh, I don't really like it. So if you haven't been following my videos, make sure to subscribe. I do have a 2013 E550. I just replaced the motor on it. It's been, it's been a very expensive journey. Uh, you should join me with it. Uh, but they did give me this 2023 Mercedes C-Class while mine was in there getting its subframe replaced. I do have experience driving that era of Mercedes, the W204s, the W212s, 218s, all the way back into the 211s and even a couple of 210s. And this was the first time I really got hands-on with a new Mercedes that everyone can drive like the C-Class. So now that I've had this car for a couple of days, I do want to go over my first impressions in four main categories. One being the X exterior and the looks, second being the interior and features that it has inside, third being the powertrain and how it is to drive, and fourth being the technology and safety features that typically come in vehicles of this caliber. And what I found honestly really surprised me. So first off, let's start with the exterior. Now, it's funny, this car on camera looks fantastic and in pictures, it looks great, but in person, it just doesn't translate to me. And even when I'm setting this camera up now, it looks great, it looks sharp, it looks aggressive. But when you get up to it and you're looking at it and you kind of walk around it and you see it from afar, it just, it doesn't tickle the right spots. There's a certain stateliness to the E-Class that I have and a certain stateliness to the W204s, uh, the C-Class from you know 2009 all the way up to around 2015, uh, that those vehicles have and a certain presence that they have. And I get the, very hard sneaking suspicion that this thing is just trying way too hard. And the closest thing I can relate it to is when they released the Type R Civic and how aggressive that looked. And of course, that's an extreme example, but with every single vehicle getting the AMG body kit and the AMG wheels, it's really watering down the brand. It's really watering down what it means to own an AMG. And it really just looks kind of pathetic, if you ask me. The wheels, I think, are disgusting. I don't know who in Mercedes or AMG thought that putting a ring around the inside or the outside of the wheel would look good. I, I It just makes the wheel look smaller. It, to me, it makes it look like a hubcap. I don't understand it. I don't know if it's supposed to be body colored. If it is, that's gonna be disgusting because if you have like a red car and then red ring around the wheel, I, I, think it's, I think it's a very, very poor choice. I hate them. You could put any wheel on here and it'd probably look 10 times better in my opinion. The body kit, like I mentioned, you do get uh, front accents and ground effects. You do get a spoiler. These wheels, of course, are included. And of course, you get the blacked out package, if you will. And if you like that sort of stuff, that's great, but it just looks like it's doing a little too much. You know, and I really think it comes down to the proportions of this car. The rear end has a little bit of, you know, W205 on it. Uh, the front end looks like an A-Class. And that's really my main issue here is that you don't really know what it is. I mean, in years past, you knew what a C-Class was, what an E-Class was, and what an S-Class was. After 2016, the brake lights started looking the same. The headlights started looking almost exactly the same. There was no four eyes uh, on the uh, E-Class like mine is. There was no significant difference in the S-Class when you jumped up, other than having a different amount of daytime running light lines, which some vehicles didn't even have. So it was, <laughs> they lost their identity in my opinion. And the rear end is really another part that's just kind of driving me crazy. I don't think it looks bad. Again, on camera, I just set this camera up. I'm like, that's a good looking car. And then I look up from the viewfinder and I'm like, mm, it just doesn't, it just doesn't do anything for me. It just, it's too small in the back. It's it's too aggressive for what it is. It's a C300. Like what, what are we doing here? I feel like everyone's just confused and maybe it's just me. And if that's the case, then that's fine. But it's still what I feel about it. Um, ever since around 2015 or 2016, I don't know what the f Mercedes think they're doing. Um, their top end vehicles, their halo vehicles, the SLs, uh, the AMG GTs, they look amazing. And they're trying to take that design cue and dribble it down to the other models. And every single manufacturer does this exact same thing as well. It just didn't work very well on these models, I don't think. And you know, one of the funniest things about the interior is actually it has the same exact syndrome that the exterior does, right? So I'll put a shot in of the camera looking into the interior and it looks great. It looks inviting, it looks sporty, it looks strong. It looks like something that you want to sit in, you want to hit the uh, hit the pedal to the metal and you want to kill some miles in it. But then you actually get in it and you're like, all right, all right. It's, it's, it's certainly nothing special. And again, it's a C-Class. It's not supposed to be special, 
but then it is a Mercedes, which is supposed to be special. So you're in this weird conundrum. And again, going back to watering down the AMG name and watering down the Mercedes name, they have the cheap A220s, the CLAs, which were atrocious vehicles for what they were. They were barely a Mercedes. The GLA is actually just a rebadged Infiniti or a joint effort with Infiniti, if you will. So there's a lot of cheapness and there's a lot of budgeting that's going on. And the difference between something like this and an older W204 is that W204 wasn't trying to be crazy advanced and crazy high end. The interior of my car and those W204s are very bland. It looks like a Honda Accord inside. I mean, they're very bland, they're not advanced, but they're not trying to be. And they deliver where they're supposed to be with premium materials and a premium experience. Now, as I mentioned, the interior does leave a lot to be desired, and it looks great when you first look at it, or you're first looking at a video or a picture or online where you're gonna go look at this vehicle for the first time. But then you jump in it, and it just it just doesn't hit where it should. Uh, there's tons of this fake carbon fiber plastic that kind of creaks and kind of doesn't feel all that well. Uh, these vents are cool. I like them. They're from the other Mercedes models, but the touch points are, they're okay. You got some soft leather on top and everything and on the side, you do get some gloss plastic uh, on these buttons on the side where your, uh, your, where your memory seats are. So just kind of poor decisions a lot of ways, I think. Um, this main display I think is fantastic. Uh, your infotainment, I don't know what Mercedes calls it, but the infotainment system here is wireless car CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. Uh, it works great. Uh, I've never had a problem with it. I think the system itself is great. I think Mercedes has a very nice uh, uh, selection of kind of Mercedes branded features, if you will. Um, it definitely feels nice and it feels like it is a Mercedes product here. It works well as expected nothing more to say really there. Um, unfortunately, what this is connected to, i.e. the speakers, are atrocious. They are the worst speakers I have heard on a new 2023 vehicle. I've driven some cheap vehicles this year as rentals and runarounds and just moving cars around. This is terrible. I turned the bass up, I played with the equalizers. This thing cannot produce a decent sound, a decent sound at all, at all. Unless you're like listening to a podcast or like talk radio, then it sounds fine. There's no bass, there's no thump, there's no, I don't even know if there's subwoofers, it doesn't sound like there is. Even if there isn't, I've been in cars with no subwoofers that sound way better than this for half the price. When you get into the car, if it doesn't have the performance of like an C63, or if it doesn't have the, the ride like an S-Class, you know, at least it's gonna be a nice daily driver. That's the whole point of the C-Class, right? If I can't listen to good music, I'm not having a very good time here. So other than the atrocious music quality, which I will never buy a car like this strictly for that, uh, it seems to be okay. The infotainment is great. You do have a nice gauge cluster up front as well, but they did not use analog gauges because you know it's cheaper and that's gonna be kind of how it is from, from now on. However, the steering wheel itself I think is great. I think it feels nice. The capacitive buttons on there are trash. Um, the seats are extremely uncomfortable. I don't like how they operate. Um, the kinetic seats thing is dumb. You shouldn't buy it at all. Uh, I don't think it helps you at all. It didn't help me in my two hour round trip. It's an hour there, an hour back, two hour round trip. Um, in fact, I found myself not wanting to get back in the car for the second leg of the journey, which is which is surprising because I love driving and this is a Mercedes. So it's supposed to be a great driving, driving machine. The seats, like I said, they're not comfortable. The material's probably fine. It's got good adjustments, but that with the sound quality and then just the, We'll get into the driving portion in just a second, but I, I'm just really just not a fan. I think this is a very pedestrian vehicle and made for people who have never had a Mercedes before. And, you know, maybe that was their goal. Maybe they succeeded, but I don't think you'll have any other previous Mercedes buyers looking and being excited about a C300 from this year, I'm gonna be honest. And with that being said, I guess let's just kind of jump right into the driving portion, which, I, I don't have a lot of good news for. So when I think of Mercedes, I don't think about the ultimate driving machine. I think about BMW and I think about that. But I do think about a driving experience that is tailored to the person that is in that driver's seat. And the engine and the transmission and everything is speaking together is on the same page and just works beautifully. And that's been my experience in pretty much any Mercedes I've ever gotten it to except for this one. This has a 48 volt mild hybrid system. And what that means is that during the start stop thing, which it does have, uh, instead of using the starter or using the starter at all to turn up the vehicle 
in the first place, it uses that 48 volt motor to get the vehicle running to the right RPM and then fires it. And it actually starts up very quietly and the start stop is one of the best I've ever experienced. I think Germans do a great job. And this 48 volt uh, system is very similar to what you see in BMWs as well. So the start stop is awesome. You barely even know it's there. It does handle amazing though. This chassis is amazing at handling. It's super sharp, almost too sharp. And I think that has something to do with the setting. I probably had it in, uh, but it's very sharp. It handles well. The formatic system grips. I've had no problems chucking it around corners. It really is very fun to drive, but I would love to try this vehicle with a different powertrain because it does just handle so well. However, everything else kind of falls apart from there. The throttle is extremely touchy and extremely laggy. Has nothing to do with that 48 volt system, or at least I don't think so, because I've turned off auto stop start, and from a start, you hit the pedal and it kind of, all right, we'll go. It's almost like it's like, it's someone just learning how to drive stick and they kind of, and then they let the clutch all the way out and then it picks up and goes and it feels terrible. And there's been a couple of times already where I needed to like, oh, I need to get out of the way quick. And I hit my foot on the gas a little bit and it just, it just doesn't, it just doesn't go. And if it's got an extra 20 horsepower and 20 something pound fit of torque, um, I mean, that should be able to help get it up and help kind of push it out of the way just a little bit quicker. Um, the two liter that's in here, I mean, with the uh, with the battery, it makes around 300 pound foot of torque, around 280 horsepower, something like that. Sounds great, um, but the transmission doesn't know what to do with that power. It's it does not searching for gears, and it is very smooth to shift, um, but it just doesn't. Sometimes when you floor it, there's like a solid second or two where boom, and then it kicks in, and then it kind of takes off, and it's just not conducive to an experience that I would expect from Mercedes. This feels like a Kia. It feels like a Hyundai. It feels like they took everything that looked good on paper, put it in a car, and didn't think about how to actually make it work. Now, I'm not trying to flame Mercedes or give them any slack that they don't deserve, but it's just, when it comes down to the, the driving acceleration, you're talking about braking being absolutely way too sharp and way too unlinear uh, for what this car really is. Uh, and then you just get into the only good thing about it, which is really the handling and the chassis. Uh, the drivetrain leaves a lot to be desired. Um, the 48 volt system works great for your start stop and your goes. Uh, I mean, I got around 37 miles per gallon, a 200 mile round trip, or sorry, a two hour round trip, about 100 miles, which is pretty good. Um, around six or seven miles per gallon better than my E550. So um, take that for what it's worth, but it gets, it gets great gas mileage. It doesn't harm the planet all that much. Uh, the mild hybrid system is definitely a shift in the right direction. But overall, I really don't think that this is something for, for $55, $5,000, um, I think you're gonna leave a lot to be desired. And I think a lot of the other uh, brands from the same country, other German brands, can definitely offer you a slightly more compelling experience, especially when it comes to just kind of cohesion of the entire drive itself and the cohesion of what it is to actually jump into one of these cars, the interior, the drivability, the exterior, everything. I think they kind of missed the mark on this guy right here. So I guess that just leaves us with the technology that this has and it's, it's lacking quite a bit of technology that I thought would have come standard in vehicles nowadays. There is no lane keep, there's no lane centering. Um, there is no, uh, I mean, you have blind spot awareness and you have forward collision. That's basically what you got. You got nothing else. Um, there's no auto stop for anything. I, I couldn't find it breaking, for, it wasn't breaking for me if I got too close to an object when I'm parking. Um, so the technology that this has in terms of safety features, you, you get your Distronic, you get your automatic pedestrian and, 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 and automatic braking, emergency braking, and your blind spot. And on a 20 something thousand dollar Toyota, you get lane keep, lane centering, or Hyundai, lane keep, lane centering, forward collision, pedestrian warning. I mean, some of them will even basically drive themselves on the highway for basically half the price. So uh, a lot to be desired. I don't know where the money is going. I, I really don't. I would argue maybe that 48 volt system, that mild hybrid system, but so let's do a quick little recap. It's got the ride quality of any other $30,000 sedan or SUV. Uh, literally nothing special. Uh, the interior, although kind of looks cool from the outside, you jump inside, you live in it, it makes your back hurt, it makes your body hurt, um, and it's still really cheap and there's really no features inside other than that ginormous display. Um, exterior wise, looks great on camera. Maybe like me too. Then you see me in person and you run away, just like you see this car and you run away. Uh, I don't really like this at all. I think the proportions are all fed up. I think the wheels are fing stupid. I think the powertrain is fine on its own, but the way it's integrated in this car and how it 
communicates and the nine speed it's got. It's just, it's just not good. I don't like it at all. I would take a W210 C class over this or W211 or W2, I'm sorry, W204 or W203 over, uh, over this any day uh, with no extra features or no extra technology. The Distronic is nice. I have that in my 2013. Um, that's been around since like early 2000s. Uh, your automatic braking is great when it comes into play, I guess, but there's no lane centering. There's no advanced technologies like that. You got great headlights. I mean, they're LEDs, awesome. Uh, two liter turbo, 48 volt system, hybrid, mid car, mid. I'll give this whole car like a 4.8 out of 10 if I'm giving Davy page views types of types of scores. Would not recommend it. If you're going to look at one, just keep these things in mind. See how touchy the gas is, how touchy the brake is, how touchy the steering wheel is. Uh, touch the interior of it. Try to get the feeling of it. Really look at this car because you look at it from 20, 30 feet away and it just looks like it's trying too hard. So don't get the AMG pack or get an actual AMG and don't get your broke ass to a AMG lookalike car and don't put AMG badges on it or I will find you and I will so this has just been a quick review of this brand new 2023 Mercedes C300. So I don't like the exterior. I don't like the interior. I don't like how it drives. I don't like how it brakes. I don't like how it looks. Uh, so where we're at with this one is I would probably rate it like a three out of 10. I would drive it if I have to, which I am because I do. Um, but I'm very excited to get my W212 back. I think that's a much better, more solid platform. Uh, if you enjoy these short types of videos, these opinionated sort of firecracker little videos, definitely let me know. I'm racing against the heat so my camera doesn't overheat. Um, but if you like these types of videos, let me know. Most of you guys aren't even subscribed who are watching me. So I really appreciate if you guys would hit that subscribe button. We're almost to a thousand subscribers, a huge benchmark for me. I've been trying to get there for the past year. I really appreciate any support and love, comment, like, and subscribe for future videos like this. And if you haven't seen my previous content, I make all my videos really on my experience with my 2013 E550. I just spent around 25 grand replacing the motor in it. I'm not hostage to it. I love it. I swear, I love my car. I don't hate it and I'm not upset. I love, don't worry. If you haven't watched that series, I'll put the playlist or something uh, down below so you can check it out and follow my journey along with me and live vicariously through me and save your wallet. But thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate the support and we'll see you the next time.